Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. We're going to give it a few minutes, see if anybody comes to join us. Hey, Batman, thank you for being here. Who's bringing the donuts? Well, we'll probably have some undercovers watching us or some police. You never know. Maybe they'll bring the donuts. I don't know. They just don't need to show up at my house with them. <laughs> anyway, so I hope you're doing well, Batman. Sorry you didn't make it out all the way yesterday when you was kayaking or the day before yesterday. I'm sorry, but at least you got out and about. Let's see if anybody join us, joins us. I've got some articles I want to share. And I've had this plan for like two days. Well, I didn't know what time I was going to do it, though. So we're going to give people a few minutes, see if anybody shows up. Um, in the meantime, though, we can go ahead and share the one screen that is our disclaimer. That way, um, we don't have to worry about doing that later. Okay. So we will share the screen. Chrome tab. This one. Okay, actually, this one here is what the full. Um, this is what the um, thumbnail was supposed to look like, but unfortunately, it cut part of it off. But this is the mother of this lady that the bill we're going to be discussing is named after. The lady, the mother's on the right. The daughter's on the left, and um, her name is Marcy, and she was murdered in 1983, and she's, and her her case will be coming up again today, so we're gonna get rid of that. And then, can you see that? That's the copyright disclaimer. No, nope, can't. Okay, we'll share that. We are, hey, President Santa, and you're not late for once. Hey, Joe Black. Okay, and we're gonna share the copyright disclaimer. That way, when we start sharing other people's work. We'll have our butts covered. Oh, wrong one. Hold on. This one is what we need. Can y'all see that? No, y'all. I keep showing you the wrong thing. Try again, guys. Stop that one. Share screen. I don't understand why it's not working. It will be the same thing again. Yep. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. I got an idea. Put it this way. Give me one second, guys. There we go. Okay. Yeah, we'll try again. But first you don't succeed, try again. Okay. Hey, news now, Lisa. Good morning, darling. Okay, so where are we at? No, we don't want to go there. We want to go here. Share. Screen. Chrome tab. Damn it. We're going to get this right, guys. I'm telling you, we're going to get it right. Thank you, Batman, for welcoming everybody. Hey, Country Boy News. Because I am... <laughs> I've got everything set up, though, I think, guys. Once I get this picture up there, we should be fun to get going. Okay. Can you guys see the copyright disclaimer now? Yes. Okay, we're just... Copyright disclaimer because we are going to be sharing some other people's videos and articles. So we've got that done. And now we're going to stop sharing that. And I'm going to open our first thing that we want to go over. Okay, this starts out. What got me into this is um, there was a shooting the other day in Palm Beach Gardens, which is near the area in which I live. And um, that shooting... Uh, I read you guys the article about it the other day. It was very short, and it was very short. So we're going to go into the article, and then we're going to go into why it was so short and some things like that. So let me go to streamers, and we're going to share this screen. Are we? Hey, Henry, oh, Cheese Bear, how are everybody? Okay, we're okay on audio so far. Hey, so Carl, how you doing? Okay, so we're going to start out with the article. 
share screen and Not sharing the right one. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Okay. So here we are. I'm going to read this. Let me make sure we're on the right page. So, okay. Okay. This is from the Palm Beach Post. Oh, come on. Don't tell me they're doing this again. This happened to me the other day. It's like they give you a link, but then you come back to look at the link. It's changed. Does that, you know? Come on. This isn't fair. <sighs> give me a second, guys. I don't understand this, you know, when you sit there and you have the link, it should take you straight there. I'm sorry, guys, I don't understand. I've had all these fixed up for two days. Um, look at all these shootings. Y'all see all this stuff? This isn't where we're going to reach. Okay, here it goes. This isn't the one we were supposed to do, but this is it. Now, this is the article. Open it for me. Okay, here we go. No, no. Yeah, this is it. Okay, this is it. Okay, let me make sure y'all can see it. Okay, good. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. Okay, here we go. Shit, that's the wrong one. We don't want that one. We want this one. Pump, is that the one we all can Shit. Okay, let me share it one more time. I'm sorry, guys. I really thought I had this all set up. I will get better at this. The more I keep practicing, 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 I will get better. Okay, here we go. Jupiter Man. And Jupiter is like one town away from me. 34 shot. Injured by Palm Beach Gardens Police near I-95 State Investigates. The shooting took place Wednesday morning near I-95 and PGA Boulevard, Palm Beach Gardens. The state is investigating why a Palm Beach Police Gardens police officer shot a Jupiter man along PGA Boulevard on Wednesday morning. Sean Whelan, 34, was first tased and then shot by officers around 7.45 a.m. according to an evening news release by city police. Drivers who hit Ridlock near PJ Boulevard in Interstate 95 reported seeing police confront a man who was standing in the roadway. Palm Beach Gardens police said they responded to the report of a suspicious man who is creating a disturbance in the area of PGA and RCA boulevards at around 7.48 a.m. Officer says Whelan was carrying knives and charged an officer after being tased, police said. After an officer shot him, paramedics... Uh, after an officer shot him, paramedics drove Whelan to... A, a hospital for treatment of at least one got sh gunshot wound, the release said. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the Palm Beach Garden the State Attorney's Office are investigating the shooting. The 7th in Bobbin Law Enforcement Officers in the county in this year. I mean in 2022 or 2021. That's crazy. The officers involved in the incident have been placed on administrative leave, according to city police. A shooting is the seventh involved in Palm Beach County Police in 2021. Okay, that's 2021. So, I was wondering why they didn't name this 
here, okay? Why they didn't name the cops. And it doesn't say in this article. Yes, it does. Here it is. The department said it will not release their names because they have invoked the right to privacy under the 2018 Amendment to the State Constitution modeled on California's Marcy Law. Marcy's Law, it allows crime victims, crime victims, real victims, to withhold their names and addresses from public records. Okay. This is why the other day when I read that article and it was only like a paragraph short and it did hey black um Matt National he struck by lightning Teresa. Hey darling. Um that's the reason why they didn't have their names. Now Marcy's Law, we're gonna go into further what Marcy's Law is, but it was created for real for crime victims, okay. Um, now what the police are doing, well, let's go back to a video I shared a few months ago when, before this went, okay, this is a, a amendment in this state, in the state of Florida, Marcy's law is now, uh, amendment, okay, to our constitution in Florida. It is made for crime victims. So what they're saying now is if a cop goes on a call and, let, and somebody comes at them with a knife or maybe hands, whatever, that they're allowed to be considered a victim even if they wind up shooting and killing the person. Just think about this because we're going to open this up for discussion when I'm done showing the articles. Yeah, I hope everything is better this year for officer safety. I really do. Okay, so let's go back. We're going to play a video that I put out. Um, I'm not sure exactly when. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Let me pause it. Let's see. When was this? i put this out. Do we see a date on it? Okay. September 26, 2020. And um, this is when they were trying. Hey, thanks for the super chat, Batman. That's when they were trying to. Hey, Harry Nuts. When they were thinking about um, trying to get this passed where, where cops could use this amendment right. That is meant for citizens. And we all know that cops give up their amendments. They give up their rights for privileges when they're on the job. Okay. So we're going to go to this video. This is from a while back. So here we go. Okay, just found this article. I haven't read it yet. I thought we could go over it together. And then you guys let me know next time I do this, would you like for me to do it live? Or would you like me to just do it like this? I don't know. Okay, so what does it say? Fraternal Order of Police is suing the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office to challenge the policy. And they're talking about something to do with Marcy's Law, which is a victim's rights type thing. So after we watch... Uh, the video real quick and watch part of it together. Live from the local station, News 4 Jack starts now. Right now at 5.30 in Jacksonville, a judge is considering whether police should be able to hide their names from the public under Marcy's law when they become crime victims. The fraternal order police is suing the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office for the rights for our officers to shield their name from the public when they are victims on or off the job. News for Jackson investigator Kelly Wiley has the story. Marcy's Law is Florida's Bill of Rights for Victims. Passed in 2018, it gives crime victims the right to be told when legal hearings involving the alleged suspect come up and even the right to have their names excluded from public police reports. But now Jacksonville's Fraternal Order of Police is suing the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office over their policy that its own officers can't invoke Marcy's law in the course of its official duty. The attorney for Jacksonville's FOP says it's a constitutional right in Florida and should be afforded to officers. The law says if you are the victim of a crime, you can request Marcy's law protection. So the issue has nothing to do with their employment, it has everything to do with the constitution constitutional rights of an individual in the state of Florida. And every individual should be afforded the same rights. I think we can all agree on that. In court Thursday, the city of Jacksonville's legal team argued 
health officers have several rights that civilians don't when they wear a badge. And the larger picture here is that officers are afforded um, uh, plenty of protections when it comes to their personal information, addresses, and things of that nature. Uh, there is no provision anywhere uh, that would um, provide for uh, uh, the not disclosing a police officer's name uh, associated with um, on-duty activities. DePaul. Okay, and I'm not going to replay the whole thing because that's their article. Um, but there's also, you know, you can read the article. I'm going to. Okay, so that I put out what September of twenty twenty. Yeah. So twenty twenty I put that out. So I never knew what happened, you know. I I didn't know what happened. So when I seen the article I had read, um said that these cops that shot this man their night had claimed Marcy's law. And I'm like, well, was it, are they allowed to do that? Because I remember that I had covered this before and they were talking about, you know, taking it to the Supreme, I guess the Supreme Court of Florida. And um, I didn't know that it had, I guess they've, it's been passed. And um. They're saying that this constitutional amendment is so ambiguous, it has lent itself to so much misinterpretation, misapplication, and inconsistency. Let's see if we can get to the next article. Well, we're going to be talking about this some more. Same topic. I want you guys to think about, hey, Kim, how you feel about the cops. Even if they kill somebody, if that person, if they can say that person... Put them in fear of their life. Hey, accountability for all. They can say, they can claim Marcy's Law, which means we'll never know who their name. They will be treated like any other real crime victim. That's not right, in my opinion. You're trading your rights for privileges when you become a police. So let's go to the next screen. And the next article, which would be... Police hide their identities using the victim's right, Bill Marcy's Law. That's the name of this. And let's make sure you guys can see this. Yes. Okay. I'm going to read it. Oh, fuck. That's the wrong one. This one. Let's go back. Okay. Uh, all was set crime victims. It now hides the identities of cops who use force. And this was done. See, I didn't know this was done October 29th. So, you know, I had covered the other one in September and then, okay. Anyway, this story was co-published with Pro, 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 Pro uh, I can't say that word. Okay, in January 2019, a Dollar Tree Park employee in Mace. Oh Lord, I never heard of that place. Mesa, Canton, Florida, called 911 after a homeless man stole seventy dollars of beer, wine, candy, and cookies. A sheriff's deputy had little trouble finding him. The man had passed out drunk in a nearby ditch with an open box of Reese's Pieces. The deputy took the man to the hospital where he became a rate. With his left wrist handcuffed, handcuffed to the bed, he started swinging his right arm wildly, wildly. To get the son's suspect under control, the deputy pepper sprayed him in the face. The Hernando County Sheriff provided a copy, a copy of the use of force report to USA Today and in response to public record requests, they have blacked out one critical, one crucial detail, the deputy's name. You see a picture of it right there? They've marked it out. Okay, they redacted it in a use of force report. Under a law passed to protect crime victims, the deputy was entitled to privacy, officials say. He suffered a battery. The felon suspect had been attached to a pulse ma monitor and the wire hit near the shoulder, the deputy's shoulder. Introduced in memory of 
a young woman murdered by her ex-boyfriend, Marcy's Law was created to offer crime victims a slate of rights, including protecting them and their families from harassments by their attackers. Now, as police across the nation face cries for accountability and mountain evidence of brutality and systematic, systematic racism, law enforcement agency in Florida are using Marcy's Law to shield officers after they use force sometimes under questionable circumstances florida agencies have used i florida agencies have used it to hide the names of officers who sent a 15 year old boy to the hospital officers who fired bullets into moving cars and officers who released their canine dogs on drunk and mentally ill people marcy's law passed in california in 2008 and through a well-funded campaign by the woman's brother, it is a law in 11 other states. It happened each time by ballot instead of allowing voters to adopt all of its implications with a single yes. Now it is on the ballot in Kentucky, a state still reeling from the botched raid that killed Brianna Taylor, a 26-year-old black medical worker in Louisville. Had it been in place, this March, the public may not have known, learned the identities of the three white officers who opened fire. This constitutional amendment is so ambiguous and has lent itself to so much misinterpretation, misapplication, and inconsistency. And that's what Amy, somebody, I can't say her last name, and she's the director of the Open Government Coalition in Kentucky. This con and then we will have th those problems emerge just as they have emerged in Florida. The law inc increasingly has been co-opted by police. It got on Florida's ballot in 2018 after being introduced by a sheriff and revised with the help of two statewide law enforcement associations. Officers allows them to claim victim status and use of force cases while they say the suspect was the aggressor. At least half of the Florida's 30 largest police agencies say they apply it to shield the names of own duty officers, a USA Today and a ProPublicus investigation found. For the agencies that do, reporters requested and reviewed thousands of pages of police report from use of force and just incidents since January 2019. And the Sheriff's Office in Kohler and Charlotte counties in southeast West Florida have withheld deputies' names in roughly one in six incidents in which an officer's used for force that resulted in a civilian's injury. And, you know, there's more on it. But I can't read all this because I'm not very good at reading out loud. But you get the point, I hope, guys. You're understanding what, hey, let's go, that this law was made for crime victims. Hey, line one. So now, when the police shoot somebody, beat somebody's ass, whatever, all they got to do, hey, PDF, is claim that... They felt like a victim, and they won't. They have to request it, too, and they have to request um, protection under Marcy's law. And the sad thing is, I didn't think this approved, but it looks to me like it went in front of the Supreme Court of Florida. It said two out of three judges said yes, and now they're using it. So am I understanding this correctly that, yes, the Supreme Court upheld it? And said, yes, the police officers can do it. So, um, man, that's messed up. And um, so now, you know, these two cops just shot at a man down the road from my home. Hey, Jack, Jack, and I can't know the name of those officers. I know they're probably on desk duty or pay leave right now. But still, I want to know who these two officers were, but because they're claiming a law intended 
for victims. It's just ridiculous. I don't know how you guys feel about that. I'm going to open the panel up in a little bit and hopefully we can get some discussion. When, but let me see if I got something else I want to share you with you. Okay, let's check out Article 3. I think this tells about, yeah, this is where it went, goes to the Supreme Court. So we're going to have to share the screen. Okay. Tallahassee Police. Marcy's Law Dispute Goes to Supreme Court. A legal battle about whether a 2018 constitutional amendment known as Marcy's Law can shield the identities of police officers went to the Supreme Court on Tuesday. The city of Tallahassee filed a notice that is the first step and asked the Supreme Court to decide whether the constitutional amendment, which is designed to bolster crime victim rights, can apply to police officers who were threatened, who were threatened in use of force incidents. A three-judge panel of the first district appeal. First District Court of Appeals last month sided with two Tallahassee police officers who argued that as victims, they were entitled to privacy protection, including in Marcy's Law. The decision came in a lawsuit filed against the city by Florida Police Benevolent Association, who represents the police officers who are identified in court documents as John Doe 1 and John Doe 2. As in common, the city's notice of taking the issue to the Supreme Court did not provide detailed legal arguments, but a statement issued last week by attorney, by city attorney Cassandra Jackson said that the case is one of great public importance to the state of Florida and its appellant level interpretation of Marcy's law. Respect for the with respect for the appellate court's opinion and appreciation for the difficult work performed by police officers every day, this, the decision has far-reaching implications related to public transparency and is deserving of final review by Florida's highest court. The lawsuit is the first major test of whether Marcy's law conflicts with the decades-old government and the Sunshine Amendment that in Shrined in Florida's Constitution, some of the nation's broadest public records law. And we are lucky to have the Sunshine Law. Not lucky, but I guess fortunate because some states don't have as good open records as we do. But now, look. Look what's happening now. Okay, so the law says the first major test, and this is Tallahassee office, officers. Remember the first article we talked about was some JSO officers that we're going to take it to court and my understanding is by reading this let me continue to read this and then we're going to see what you guys think is i think they they're saying yes they went with this but i'm not no expert y'all tell me if that's how y'all understand it give me a second though let me finish reading what i want to read okay in the april 6th appellate court decision judge lori Rowe wrote that nothing in marcy law excludes law enforcement officers or other and government employees from the protection granted to crime victims. Roe, joined by Judges Timothy Somebody and Robert Long, wrote that a police officer meets the definition of a crime victim under Marcy's law when a crime suspect threatens the officer with deadly force, placing the officer in fear of his life. The two police officers in the case that were involved in separate use of force issues in any incident that drew national uh, in an incident that drew national attention, John Doe Two shot a black transgender male last May because the police investigate officer was the victim of an ad aggravated assault with a deadly weapon in the incident involving Natasha 
Tony McDay, the police benevolent association, say he had the right to invoke the privacy privilege provided by Marcy's Law. The First Amendment Foundation, the Florida Press Association, a number of media outlets intervened in the lawsuit, arguing that ongoing Marcy's Law to apply, that allowing Marcy's Law to apply to law enforcement officers would undercut the state's open record laws. The appellate court ruling reversed a decision by the den, then Leon County Circuit Judge Charles Donson, who in July found that explicit, the explicit language of Marcy's Law was not intended to apply to law enforcement officers when acting in their official capacities. Dotson said the case involved balancing victims' right with the public's right to hold government accountable by inspecting public records and ordered the city to release the name of the two police officers. But then it went to the Supreme Court of Florida and they said they had to release it. Now that's my understanding. Are you guys getting the same understanding understanding I am? That this is what happened, that it went in front of the Supreme Court. It went in front of the Supreme Court for these two Tallahassee officers and they decided that they wanted to go against the prayer ruling by the local judge. That's the way I'm understanding it. I think it's bullshit. I think Morrissey's law is fine for real victims. Yes, I do. So let me see if I have anything else that I wanted to show y'all. And then we're going to open the panel up. Hopefully we can get some discussion going on this. I think we just looked at this one, yeah. Oh, yeah, I want to see if there was a video with this one, but there's not. Okay, so, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so let me go to StreamYards, and I'm going to invite. Copy the clipboard. And we're going to paste. And hopefully we can get somebody to join us. And I'm going to pin this up here because... I like to know how you guys feel about this. So yeah, I was wondering why the other day when these when somebody got shot, the article was just so short. It was I had read it on one of my panels. It was like a paragraph short. I'm like, okay, maybe they need a little more time. Whatever. Hello, Charlie. Hello, let's go. So um panel's open now. I'm really hoping to get a discussion going. I want to make sure that I'm understanding this right. I want to make sure. That I put it in a way that you guys understand it, and I want to make sure. I want to see if you guys agree with me or disagree with me. I mean, we're a, it's an open discussion and it's an open panel. We could talk about other issues too. So um, I don't know who it's going to be my first victim, but whoever it is, hit that link up. Streamyard's link has been dropped. Y'all don't have me up here looking stupid by myself. <laughs> Oh, I hope everybody had a good New Year's. I did. Uh, me, Tom, and Sam, we went out bowling. Tons of fun. I had never been bowling. I really enjoyed it. We played some games. It was a lot of fun. I'm trying to pin this link, so in case anybody wants to come up with me. I appreciate you guys all being here. Make sure you hit the like button. Share this video if you don't mind. I think this is important because I think police are going to start using this in more states. How does that make you guys feel? If you think it's, if you're okay with police that harm citizens being able to claim victim status, even if they kill that person, if you're okay with that, please put a one. If you're not okay with that, or put a two. Because I would like to know how you guys feel. You know, maybe it's just me. Maybe, maybe there's nothing wrong with it. Maybe they deserve to be crime victims. I don't know. Hey, Bonnie, how you doing? Yeah, busy Supreme Court. They need to get busy when um under um thinking. They've messed up here, man. 
I think. And that's what, and like, like the one person said, Florida does have one of the best open record laws. Um, even though records are still sometimes hard to get, I know we have it easier than some states, which is, it should be fun, easy in every state. So, yeah, you guys think it's bullshit, too. I'm glad because I, I just didn't know if it was me. I didn't think so. <laughs> Hey, James Jacobson. And that's why maybe, you know, wanted to get on here and do this live. I found this like two days ago and I took my time lining all the articles up, trying to get it right because I thought, you know, this is kind of important. And um, I think they're going to get worse about doing this, guys. And I don't think it's really going to matter if they're really a victim of a crime or not. They're going to claim they are. So they can kill people and then we'll never even know their names. And then if they say, well, oh, it was, you know, it was a, it was a good shooting, you know, good in their terms, then we'll never know. Hey, Shaggy, how you doing? We'll never know. Never, never, never will we know. Okay, so let me see what we're going to play real quick. Um. Oh, I got a fun, a kind of fun article for you guys. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Just because, why not? Oh, I got some pictures too. I want to show you guys. Hold on. Let me show you the pictures first. Quite a bit. I lost them, I think. I don't know. I don't think you can see them. Yeah. I think you can see this one. Yeah, we're gonna go. Can y'all see that? Yeah, <laughs> that's the picture I took of the party favors that we got at the bowling alley. It's cute, isn't it? Okay, but I want I had another little fun article for you guys. I gotta find that. <laughs> this is where all my email came in. Wait. Okay, where is it? Um, this is again another article about that. I was looking to see if there was a video on it. I don't see one. Okay. Um, Oh, oh, you got to go cheese bear. Okay. Bye bye. I was hoping. Okay, I'm going to put this on. I don't want to put it. I'm going to go to YouTube and I'm going to play a quick video. Anyone? Why do that? Maybe somebody will come join me. Okay, y'all, y'all watch this for a minute, and I'm gonna. Uh, hold wow. Hold on. I'm gonna share this video. It's one of my old videos. I'm gonna share this with y'all real quick when I go use the restroom. And if anybody wants to come up when I get back, you guys can come up. Hey, pissed off, Marine. 
Uh, anybody that, what, hey, Rugged Monkey, can you, can, yeah, yeah, can you? I don't know, yeah, they're saying anybody can claim it, Rugged Monkey. All you got to do is ask for it, yeah, yeah, ask for it, and then your name can't be used in a report either. If it, What's good for the goose is good for the gander, but they're not supposed to have rights. They're supposed to have privileges, you know, but this is bullshit, and I don't know what we can do about it at this point. Maybe petition people, I don't know. That's why I need everybody's help. That's why I bring these things to you guys. So we can all try to think together and figure out how to fix this shit. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I just know it's, it don't seem right to me. You know. Okay, so I'm going to share an old video of mine real quick. And, um, shit. And when I do that, I'm going to go to the restroom real quick. I'm not going to start this at the beginning because I'm walking. This is me and Miss Ackermanda. This is the first time we met Sergeant Pierce. This is dated February 12th, 2021. Almost a year ago. Wow. Oh, Sorry about the shaky photograph. Y'all know me. I'll be back. Watch this. He goes. He touches us both. Go for it. 
oh, this is the department that murders broken down motorists, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, the guy up there by the double tree? Yeah. Yeah. He you was... got blood on your hands. That's the same spot that guy was shot at the other day. Yeah. A guy was murdered there a few years back. Same spot. What one's actually doing some work, though. <laughs> Guys. Yeah, let's get the car now. Let's get his car number because I want to find out who he is since he doesn't ID himself. I think that's his car down there. That which one? Oh, down there. Okay, that's fine. Well, they've got all that crap there. I'm gonna try it. Let's go. Here, walk this thing. Is that your girlfriend's car? Is that So what's the difference? Because there's no dog in that one? Huh? What's the difference? There's no dog in that one? Oh, that's all bullshit. I mean, what's, why do they go so crazy? They're going to be YouTube stars. They're going to be on YouTube. Yes, they will be. I don't understand um, what the difference was. All right, guys, their phone number will be posted in the description. We're going to blow them up, guys. That's the one that touched me right there, non-consensual. That's the guy. He refused to identify himself. But also. isn't it department policy to ID if asked by citizens? Question, what would have my charges been? Oh, we get a card. Thank you. All right, guys. So this is, let's see what his name is. I wonder what my charges would have been. Can you elaborate? Richard Pierce, uh, Sergeant. So, uh, Sir, anything I can be in public, I can film. Well, you guys are making up a story that I'm disturbing a dog. I didn't say anything. So what you're was a liar. for? Stay away from the police car that has a dog in it. That's all I'm asking. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's so good. now it's just a, a, a now please it's and a thank, thank you. you. Before, Before it was I'm gonna arrest you. you. It's are you sorry for putting your hands on me? Absolutely not. Of course not. Always think first. Uh, at, at, they do things and then they and think about it later. Yeah. yeah. If they, they would just slow down, down a little bit, bit a lot of things would be avoided. This is the guy who touched me, guys. Five six one seven nine nine four five three three. Richard Pierce. He's a sergeant. Palm Beach Gardens Police Department. Okay. And I'll post all of their information in the description, guys. Y'all heard him say he. He, he he was not sorry for touching what, us. What is there to be warned about? Damn camera. Of all my encounters that I've had with law enforcement, this, That's one, been the worst. this guy right here has pissed me off, bro. You guys know me. I usually don't get upset, but I'm pissed. Officers lead by example. Keep that in mind. 
We're tired of your knees on our necks, and we're tired of you guys shooting us when our cars break down. Tell them, Amanda. Call back to, like you said, they don't take time to think. I know that's a hard job, but, you know, you've got to think with question of people's life and liberties in your hands. And the most um, messed up part about this guy was he's barking directives at me, putting his hands on me, but he don't want to give me his name. Yeah, Finally gave us a long, card. After Finally. How long? Well, they said everything was safe. I came back to you and gave you exactly what you wanted. Did I not? We would like for you to verbalize it, but you did give us the card, which is better than nothing. Walk with shame. I'm not sorry either. Wow, guys. Well, that was something else there. I don't know what the big deal was because there was a dog in the car. I don't get it. E-A-L-M-B-E-A-C-H G-A-R-D-E-N-S Yeah. Look at Yeah, so that was the first time we met Sergeant Pierce. It was our first interaction ever with him. And we never expected, I'm sorry about the filming, guys. I, I, I know I'm still shaky, but I was worse then. He, um, you know, we never expected them to say anything to us. We were just filming a traffic stop. It seems like when you least expect it, <laughs> and all of a sudden he's like, they were fixing it. They look at me and say, get that person away from that car. And then I look up and they're starting to run towards Amanda. And they're fixing the tackler. And I yell, watch out. And she turned around, you know. Thank God, because they were fixing the tackler. Like, because there was a doll in the car. She wasn't touching it. She was just looking in there. It was crazy. We didn't even realize there was a dog in there. It's crazy. So, yeah, he is, and we still, this piggy is not done yet. This piggy, we're not, we've seen him since then. He's, um, he's the one that the night Amanda was arrested, he was there. She asked for a sergeant because they were arresting her for jaywalking. And guess who shows up? Nobody but his ass. Yep. And then they arrest her. So that was the next interaction with Pierce. And I don't know. Mm, do we see him again? Uh, and and that night, again, he was saying stuff like he did not regret putting his hands on us and that he enjoyed it. He actually, he told Amanda he actually enjoyed putting his hands on her that night. They, they arrested her. So, yeah, that was a mess. So, anyway, and then one day when I went up to the police station, I mean, not the police station, what's it called? Like the municipal building, city hall, whatever. I went up there one day, and that's when they called the police, and then Pierce showed up. Have you guys, you guys seen that, right? If not, I can show you all a piece of it, but we ain't gonna watch much of it. Hey, Pandora. Hey, sweetheart. It's good to see you. Mm -hmm. 
anyway, um, but yeah, so he's no good, and then it's like, and then his, um, one of the other sergeants at that same department, well, first he doxes me in this video I'm fixing to show you, he doxes a name, and then we go up there complain on him at, well, let's go to this one first, one step at a time, shit. Yeah. Hit the wrong button. <laughs> Once again, I hit the wrong button twice, guys. Yeah, there's a lot of ongoing stories here, and I'm not done with them. You know, there's a lot of work here that needs to be finished with these departments. They're not quite right yet. Well, I don't know. Not yet. It'll be a long time before they're right. I mean, they haven't even realized that. And, you know... They need to leave people alone on video. Some of them have, but not all of them. Yeah. The goal is to have them just let us ignore us. Let us video. If we ask a question or if we ask for name and badge number, give it to us. Other than that, just let us be. We just want to document. Let me find this video real quick. Yeah. Okay, this is it. Okay, so yeah, I want to... Okay. Let me... So I go up to this municipal building. The second time I've ever been there, the first time I went there, they didn't share... They didn't call the police. Well, they might have. Uh, I don't think they did. But when I went to the police station, yeah, the police were there, but I just assumed they were over there. I knew something was up because the first time three, the sergeant and the assistant, sorry, two assistant, no, the chief and two assistant chiefs come because I went to the municipal building first, which this is it right here. I'm standing upstairs here. Um, the first time I went there, I went to this building first and they were they were rude and stuff you'd have to go back and watch that video it's called they tried to intimidate me and then a few months i mean then i walked to the police department and then all of a sudden in comes the chief and two assistant chiefs and they just say they're there to say hello you know but of course i don't believe that i think they were there to intimidate me, but at least they were being not acting like Pierce was. He was acting way worse. So this time I come back and I ask for information on a when the next public meeting is, and my dumbass really believes that this lady is going to get the information to let me know because I was going to go videotape the next meeting. Notice the baby grand piano. Notice all the expensive artwork. Notice how all the hallways just about are closed off. When you go, anytime you go in there, I only see two ladies, but yeah, all them hallways have businesses. I mean, offices down every hallway. That's a baby grand in there. Uh, outside, they have ceiling fans, a small, like almost amphitheater type setting. This is a very expensive looking building. I don't know what's up. Why they act so funny when people come in here. But let's get to it. Okay. This video is dated September 9th, 2021. And no, I shouldn't have told him that um, as much of my business as I did. But man, this, ooh, I shouldn't have. But you know what? Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Uh, that might be how he ran my name. Because when I told him. I, I have been arrested recently in Riviera, so all I had to do was call them and ask them. But look, if they want my name, they're going to get it. I've been on that. <laughs> so, you know.
How are you? Everything that happens in this video, never thought the police were coming. I'm just taking a tour. You'll also hear me state in this video I was live. And I wasn't. I told a lie because I was scared of these people. I didn't know what they would do to me if they thought I wasn't live. And I didn't even have no data or nothing. I re so. Very beautiful building. Most of it just sits here. I'm not saying they never do no work here because I don't know what they do here. Oh, I don't know if you're going to go out there. Is the roof still in that little room? I don't know if you're going to see what it's going to be. Is she looking at us? Hey, can you access the roof from here, or is that impossible? You can't get on there? No. Oh, okay. I'm taking different pictures from different angles. Yeah. That would be a nice one, you know. <laughs> That's okay, though. There's still pretty pictures here. Like, these are beautiful. Definitely different, yes. I've been to a lot of city buildings. They, a lot of them all have something special about them, in my opinion. It's the only one I've ever seen with a baby grand or whatever kind of piano that is. It's nice, though. Pretty. I don't know how to play, but it's pretty. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I will. Thank you, sir. Okay. Have a good day. Oh, what's your name, sir? Wine. Gwen. Glenn. Gwen. Okay. Good to meet you. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. I'm going to go down here with this lady. She's supposed to bring me some information. I hope she didn't think I forgot. I don't know. Is she bringing it to me? Maybe. I don't know. I'm waiting. Patiently waiting. Hmm. Uh, I wish I bring my victims on my tripod. They have too many places that welcome me to sit here in video. I just won't believe it. So I'm just going to wait on her to bring that out. They should probably get more. There we go.
break all this locked door. That takes a long time to come without it raining. Mm. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Ain't this some shit. Must be a busy day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Hi. Okay, how are you? That one on the right going upstairs kind of looks like that one that said, are you Amy or the other one in the other video that I took, you know, since then. I'm not sure, though. Are uh, you on bright lunch or something? Or are you just chilling over here for a little bit? Oh, okay. You might pass your name and badge number, please. Okay, what is it? No, I just would like to know your name and badge number. No, you're not going to give it to me? M. Glass? Why won't you give me your name and badge number? That's rude. What's your name and badge number, sir? See? Oh, is that Pierce? Oh, my oh, God. Hi, how are you? Oh, no, it is Pierce. It's not good to see you how ever. Are you? I'm fine. Never gonna see you. Notice me back up. Um, why, officer? I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. But Sergeant, can I speak to you, Pierce, when you're done with him? I'm not going in any, any restricted rooms. I did not restrict a room. I went to a city council meeting room, which was open to the public. Really? It was unlocked. She said after I was in there, she lied to me and said there was going to be a, but there's not. And I want to know why he doesn't identify Pierce. How and I want my paper. paper please. Isn't this disgusting? I'm looking for a paper. Thank you. What's your name and badge number, please? Thank you, ma'am. And you? Thank you. This one. The one in the red, she's the one that said, are you Amy or the other one the other day? But at least she identified. And you guys did it with class. You know, most people think it's a big secret. It's not. It's public record. And then it's not to identify. Oh, Pierce, one that likes to grab ladies by the arm and tack them to the ground for non-existent jaywalking laws. <laughs> and then admits it on body cam that he enjoyed every minute of it. Yep. That's on Amanda's side. body cam. It hasn't been released yet. I've seen it. Side, side, side. He didn't say every minute of it, but he said he enjoyed it. Very sad. They got they can break the grand. And he can't tell me I was in no locked building. They might have went and locked it afterward. After she lied. I'm gonna assume she lied. I can't prove she lied. But she came and locked this. And there is not this building was not locked at the time I went in it. I showed it to you guys on camera. I did not there is a part one that has that on it. It was this, this one. Not this one here, I almost I did walk in for a second. And I see this, this says private. 
and I back out on out, out of there. Just look at the door. See, it says private though, and I leave immediately, and I get out of there. But the city council one, it was unlocked at the time. It was green. The doors were open. And there's a part one. And when they come out, they dox me. But there is a part one where I, um, she ran me out of that place and told me they were having a public meeting that night. I, I don't know who you are. So you need. I'm sorry, Epic Roller. I don't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> the next public meeting. The next public meeting. When is the next public meeting? Uh, yeah, she said she'd bring me a paper saying when it was and what the agenda was. So, about. all you want is a piece of paper saying when the next public meeting is? Yes, sir. And I've been waiting about 15, Can we get some written down? 12 minutes I've been waiting on it. public meeting is with the city council, right? Yes, sir. Could you please write it down for me? Everybody don't have internet access. <laughs> not right now, I don't, I'm out of data. I'm out of data right now. So you mean we're not live? I'm using y'all's Wi-Fi. I, <laughs> I ain't no fool. I'm using y'all's Wi-Fi, it's public, it's hmm. free, why not? How you been, you still hanging out with Amanda? They don't answer questions. Oh, you don't? I was kidnapped recently in Riviera Beach. Oh, what are you doing hanging out in Riviera Beach? I was walking on the sidewalk. Why? Just hanging out? They have nice beaches, I heard. You know our channel name. The body cams are up there. Say what? The body cams up there. You know our channel names. You know how to find them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So if you want to see it, it's there. See what? What happened? No, I don't have time to put your stuff. Okay. You should. You might can learn something. Yeah, you, you might can learn what the people really want from you guys. We want, we want, we want police. police. We really do. We want We want all, all five, five of us. He thinks there's five of us, guys. You think there's five of us in video across the whole United States? Plus country? I don't know how many of you. There are thousands. Thousands of Thousands and thousands, and it's gonna grow and grow and grow mm -hmm. until everybody understands transparency. We're we're not against you guys. We have no problem with you guys. We want to be over transparency and documentation. All we ask is just don't go in any closed doors. I never have touched a police okay, door in my life. Thank you. And that night, she wasn't touching your car. Okay. The night you yelled at her about that dog. That was not with me. Yes, it was you. Oh, and you admitted and you admitted later on body cam that you enjoyed you actually enjoyed um tackling her to the ground. Uh, I've seen the body cam. It will come out in Amanda court. Amanda never had the gun. It will show come out in court and you have um, and you admitting to a join putting your hands on us. That doesn't look good. Enjoying? No. Yeah, you yeah, you admit Why to enjoying enjoy it. I don't know. Why would you? Why would you? How can you sleep at night like you. for arresting, arresting people for a non-law? Jaywalking is not even a law, sir. We didn't arrest her for jaywalking. Uh, so you, uh, you tried the secondary of obstruction, which is the secondary the charge. Secondary. The first you're, thing you're is that... You identify yourself. The, that's why she got arrested. The, that's all I'm so you don't have to identify yourself if you're not under arrest. Y'all okay. need to learn the Constitution. Y'all need to learn the Bill of Rights. For someone to tell me that. But Will you look into it on your own, sir? Please. I know I know you're busy. Me still trying to be nice. Still begging him to do the right thing. Why are you pulling my name up? For what? For what? I'm just checking to see who you are. Yeah. So what? I'm a citizen. You're a public servant. We are. You're not a citizen. You have privileges. It's you don't have sense. rights. Like you might be a citizen, but you have privileges, not rights. You exchange your rights for privileges. Mm -hmm. Transparency. Transparency. I don't mind you knowing my name, but you could have asked me. Um, uh, I'm not hiding. It's, it's, so you didn't answer any I don't answer questions. I would never identify to police when I didn't commit a crime, and I'm not suspected of a crime. It's stupid to. 
because it's we have these. Know each other then, I mean, we're not going to be friends. We're uh -huh. never going to be friends. I not. You said you like police. No, I like good police. Uh -huh. I like a police that would that would stop something like what happened to me or Amanda from happening. That's the kind of cop I want. I want a cop that would say, "There's no crime victim." All right, we're good. That's the kind of cop I want. One that's going to go out and find the rapist, the murderer. Right, 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 right. I don't like to be called by my middle name. I would prefer you call me American and Amy. In fact, to you, that's to you, that's Miss American Amy. I don't know. Out of closed doors. Thank you. I wasn't in no closed doors. You just want to give directives, as always. Please, y'all want to give directives, whether they're pointless or not. It's just, it's unbelievable. We want to bridge the connect, the, the disconnect. We really do. Yeah, you sound like it. I sound like it. You don't even give me a chance. How would you feel well, you if you had, if you, 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 you don't want to be my friend? Do you want to be my friend now? I don't want to be your friend okay, because I can't happening. be friends with a cop because you're the enemy, real, unfortunately. If you were a good cop that followed the constitution and never violated people's rights, yeah, I would like to be your friend. I would like to get you on our side. I'd like you to get your um the people underneath you to, to read the bill of rights I, I don't i don't know i might be there yeah we often video meetings we go to the code enforcement okay. we do west palm beach riviera beach we do all these cities well, thanks for coming out for your support we yeah and, and we want you guys to do good we yeah. want to back y'all we want to support y'all we really do and we want rid of Very those proud things of city. we want red white and blue flags with no gold fringes either that's the incorporation Thank you guys. Have a good day. Bye. That's Miss Amy to you. I don't know. I don't know. That's some shit. That's Pierce. That's Sergeant Pierce. And they come out, and yeah, it was suspicious to ask me if I was live. And no, I wasn't. I lied and told them I was on their Wi-Fi live, but I wasn't. Um, at that time, I didn't have unlimited data, but after that day, my husband fixed it for me, and now I have unlimited data. So yeah, now I will be live. Anytime I say I'm live, I really will be live. He came out. They were supposed to be in there. He got mad because he didn't like the way I acted at some point, and that's when he sent them back there to get my name and stuff. Okay, is anybody gonna come up here and join me for discussion? I'm trying, and then, and then you know, there's the next. Hold on, one more thing. In case any of you haven't seen this, you, should, you need to see this. In case you haven't. This is a story that hasn't been finished, unfortunately, because I'm not done with that department, but, you know, I need help. I'm not done. Um, so after that happened, Amanda and I, we went to go up there and file a complaint against Pierce, because we're tired of Pierce at this point. So we got to file a complaint. I know some of you guys may have seen it, some of you may not have. Uh, let me see. It might be in a minute. You best to watch my man of Shandor. Thank you. Let's see if I can find it on there. If not, I'm up of it. Which might be best to play anyway, but we'll see. Oh, if it's good, good ACF. It's cold in here. Hold on, let me get this fixed first. Okay. Mm. Hold on, somebody's knocking on the door. Wait just a minute, whoever you are. Sorry. Okay, Tori. Hang on. Okay, come up, Tori. How are you doing? Doing good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I'm looking for this um, thing where we go to, you know, follow. Yeah. Wait, and that guy. You know, like I I told some other people, I was changing my channel name to Blue Lives Matter. It's what I had intended quite a long time ago. Uh -huh. um, 
But so what I'm going to be focusing on uh, probably for the next month or two is just picking out certain things when I see officers lie and how important those little lies matter. And I'll just give you a real quick example. Uh, Right before the New Year's, uh, I was out filming and uh, an officer approached me while I was filming. And I, I know why he approached me. They don't like auditors. I wasn't filming him, had nothing to do with him. Um, there was a, a disturbance near where I was. And the officer approached me and I heard the call come over the radio. And it said they were looking for an intoxicated person who was inside the magistrates. Um, and I wasn't inside the magistrates and I wasn't intoxicated. Um, so I knew it wasn't about me, but that officer really quickly escalated and then lied and said that I fit the suspect description. And the reason I say that things like this are important, officers are allowed to lie in investigations. But the problem is, is that no matter what happens, when officers lie, the citizen suffers for it. And I mean, that that just really pissed me off because I, I realized right away he was setting me up. Sorry. And it's so Hold on. This is stopping a minute. That capital corporate child. And I'd like to know what, what is your... Oh, sure, 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 sure. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Tori. Um, so anyway, basically, after he, he told me that, I'm like, I, I know how to recognize a bad cop really quick. I, there are a lot of tells to it. And so I'm just like, I'm not answering any questions. And immediately he goes into, we'll take off, like telling me to leave public property and I, I called him out i called him some nasty names and said no you, you get your supervisor out here f you you know um but my my thing about my, going to blue lies matter every time a cop tells a lie um it puts a citizen at risk and I, i'm very adamant about this because him telling me to take off he could later go and say i gave him a criminal trespass warning and it's happened to me in the past and that's why I'm like, no, every single time a cop lies, I'm going to document it. I'm going to post it. And I'm going to point out how one little lie from an officer that they don't even see as bad can turn into something terrible down the road. I mean, we I, have think, this. I think that's an excellent idea. I really do. You guys, yeah. your, your mic sounds so crackly. I'm sorry. I've got a cheap uh, headphone mic on right now. I'm just sit down. It's okay. Okay, just pause it for one minute though, or mute it for one second for like a minute, because I'm gonna play this video and then and then it won't be a problem. This is only like a minute and a half. So this is when so the night we go down there to follow the complaint. Some of you guys might have seen it. We were live. Hey David, hey Fiona. It was on an R guy and AJM. It was on Amanda was live at the time and um and outside, this guy here calls us both. This is the same department, guys. Calls us by our, both by our last names, Mrs. So and So, Mrs. So and So. But it's on the video; you can hear it. Okay, and then we go inside and or, or to ask him for a complaint form. Well, actually, we've had him call him up there because there are another one of those places where you have to call, and the guy brings it up there, which is against. That's not the policy, or that's not the law in Florida. I don't believe. I believe in Florida. They're supposed to be readily available. But regardless, we go. We come up here to file our complaint. He again doxes us by last name, both of our last name outside. Hey, Golden State, and then we get inside, and um, we're upset because he just doxed our last name. And this is what happens next. And this is Mr. Amanda's video, and we're gonna hit play real quick. And I'd like to know what what is your business um, about running our names because that's a Fourth Amendment violation. Why, Why do you need to know our names, names sir? No, we're. She's American, Amy, and I'm um, and you guys are defendants. Right, and your alias is defendant. Your department. Okay, one minute. So why did you come up with our names? Did you run our names before you come up here? I mean, it's just no, I did not. Standard procedure. 
It didn't have to be your name or Really? That's good. That's where we want them. Don't forget how you violated our rights. You're going to tell us our address is live on YouTube? What if we did that to you? What if we did that to you? What if we posted your address? That would be a crime then, exactly. Exactly, but... When you're done with this, let's pick up the red phone. You know what? Uh, that seems like intimidation, you know, it's sad. It's not. That's one reason I'm here. To I'm the friendliest guy in the world. You, you videotape now? You're a liar. You're a liar. Thank you. Friendly. Pick up the red phone and let You're what? Okay, so you can unmute now, Tori. So that's why, um, yeah, we have 400. Yeah, this is the same department, and that's why I'm not done with that department. I still want to complain to somebody, but we've got, thank you, Ragged Monkey, but that we can't go complain to another sergeant on a sergeant. You see what happened when we try to do that? Again, we got docs by our last names, and then... He said, do you want to call you subject A and subject B? We're not subjects, you know? We're not suspected of a crime, you know? Um, how about citizen A, citizen B? How about this, ma'am? And then he says our name. He says do you, he didn't have to run our name and addresses because they live in his memory. And then he said, do you want me to give your addresses, out, your home addresses out to and that's not right. That's retaliation. So yeah. Um, and and he knew we were live. We'd already got on to him outside, you know. We already told him we have four hundred and thirty people watching. We were on the manage channel, you know, we have four hundred and thirty people watching at that time. So yeah, I think the lies are very important, Tori, because the Supreme Court has ruled that they're allowed to lie. And it, and I think putting together those lies to show a that, it, of course, they're never going to reverse that ruling. I'm sure, but it would show that, and it also show the regular everyday person who thinks that it's okay to just go ahead and talk to them, and and show the regular everyday man or woman, the everyday human, human that this is what one of their little lies can what can have can lead to. No, and, and it's it's absolutely, you know, police rely on psychology a lot um, mm -hmm. because most people want to cooperate with the police. More importantly, most people want the police to feel like they didn't do something. So, yeah. you know, if an officer accuses you, you want to defend yourself. But there yeah, that's a natural reaction. But there's nothing you can say that's going to dissuade them. Anything you say is going to make it worse. Nothing and, you can say will help you. And, and that's exactly right. And that's why officers, they hate it when you say, I'm not going to answer any questions. Because no matter what you say, they've already made up their, their decision. And anything that you say will just help them in that. And I'll give you, I'll give you an example in the case where um, I heard the, the, the call come over the police radio where it said the guy was inside the uh, magistrate's office and was possibly intoxicated. And I knew absolutely that I was never in there and that I wasn't intoxicated. But um, the, the subject that they were looking for, I had said hello to that guy. Now, if I had said, oh, I was down there and I talked to, to somebody, then one, that's admitting I was in the area. And yep. <laughs> that just gives that officer more reason. <clears throat> Excuse me. Damn, we lost Tori. A cop. I'm blowing him away. I have my mouth covered. <laughs> he shouldn't have blew off the screen. He'll probably be back. But yeah, he's right. And also, somebody had mentioned their day. I was watching something. You can mention something so casual to a cop that um, might prove you were somewhere at the time you were supposed to be. But then later on, a crime might have happened in that area. And guess what? That cop remembers stopping you there night and you saying you were near that spot. So don't don't ever say that to them that, that like that. It's never gonna help. 
know, and again, and again, you know, and when, my, like I was saying when you were coming back up, is that I had seen somewhere somebody said there, you might say something real casual, like, I'm, I'm, I'm just leaving um, Big Ed's restaurant, whatever. Okay. If, and, um, and that get, and that, so they believe you that night because you're, because what happened went nowhere near Big Ed's. But then later on, um, they find out something happened that earlier near Big Ed's. So guess what? That cop remembers. Oh, I pulled a guy over. He said he ate at Big Ed's tonight. Guess what? You're a suspect on that case now. Exactly. Something that innocent, that innocent can be used against you later on. So even if it doesn't hurt you in, in the thing they're trying to get you for, he might come get you on something later that you had nothing to do with. It can never help you. If they're going to arrest you, they're going to arrest you. It's best to just remain silent. And, you know, if it's a thing like, you know, if you're like standing, like if you're videoing and you can, that's a little bit different because sometimes you can explain to a cop if they ain't escalating too quickly that this is a constitutional right. I'm not doing nothing illegal here. That's a little bit different, okay? But any other time, if they're going to arrest, they're going to arrest. And even then, once they're, you know, if you can avoid arrest, and if you feel you're under threat of arrest, you should always avoid it. But um, any other thing, definitely, you know, you don't want to talk to them. And even then, you know, it comes to a point where you don't want, you're not answering their questions. You definitely don't want to answer questions. And if you do, you have to be very selective about the ones you do. Right. And I mean, that, that's what, <clears throat> for, for example, with, in, in this recent case with me, I mean, I didn't know at the point when the officer came up to me that over based off what I heard over the radio that the suspect had a skateboard. But if, right. that, if that officer had been polite and honest with me, because it was on his card the, on the call slip that the suspect had a skateboard, if he'd asked me, he said, hey, I'm looking for a guy who's intoxicated with a skateboard. I'd have pointed 50 feet over and said, that's the guy you're looking for. Go talk to him, you know? Um, but instead, you know, as soon as he started going, well, it's a guy with a walking stick and you match the description. Yeah. Because he wasn't interested. Let's think about this. Used to, they would have walked up and asked that, but guess what? He's not really interested in finding the right person. He don't care. Nope. It's just, they've been called. The, the 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 little monster or whatever's inside them has been set loose and anybody will do now it don't matter if you've done anything wrong it don't matter if the guy they really want to gets away you know what i'm saying he's on you now and even if you'd have told him even if you'd have volunteer that information i don't know if he'd have gave a damn to be honest no and, and that's and he might have radioed it to somebody else he would have still fucked with you oh he he definitely would have and one of the things that I point out, a lot of a lot of people who get into auditing or cop watching may or may not realize this. I try to make sure everyone's aware of it, but uh, there's fusion centers. They're police intelligence centers, mm -hmm. and they post our names up every department within your fusion center area. And usually it's an area if you live in a large metropolitan area. It'll involve five or six counties in that area. So all these departments know who mm -hmm. First Amendment auditors are, activists are. They have mm -hmm. pictures of us. They know what we look like. Uh, they know our vehicles. And yes. officers do target auditors. I yes, mean, retaliation I've is real. And I'm glad that uh, nowadays that people are starting to act, tell people that and warn them because used to – even though I had no sense to know it because I had not enough sense. I mean, sense as in I've had so much experience with them in, in my younger life when I was younger and stuff that I've always been harassed by police. And um, not in my whole life, but since I was like in my 20s. So I know how petty they can be. I didn't think they'd be quite as petty as they are over camera, but I knew what I was, that I could get arrested. I knew that this is real, real serious shit. But I think a lot of people don't. I think some people do, but I think some people don't. I think there's probably people that's been videoing for a minute and still don't know, you know, but they'll know when it hits them. But I knew, you know, just how bad they can be and how bad they can retaliate. And, you know, it's not easy living that way. I mean, and that's why you have to be sure you're not doing shit wrong, you know. 
You can't, and and even then, you worry that they're going to try to um do something stupid and set something up on you somehow. It's crazy. It's scary. I mean, it's really stupid when you. It's stupid too over a damn camera. And that's that's the thing that a lot of people do not understand is that just like people generally who will go out and film police, they don't just do it for no reason. Some most people have had a negative experience, uh -huh. and so their minds are also prejudiced against the majority of police. And police have that same prejudice against anyone who's filming them. Right. And and that, that's a shame because good officers, I, I speak with officers all the time. Uh, yeah. And I mean, I would like to bridge the gap, but when they're acting the way they're acting, like the ones you just seen on the videos I just played, how can you? I mean, I'm still, you know, you heard me begging that man, you know? Exactly, but they didn't make me look stupid and made him look stupid. I'm sitting there begging him, uh, you know, please, sir, for we the people, for, for, the, for the sake of all that's good, go home and read this constitution. You know, I bet he's never read it, I bet he has no idea what it says. And, and the sad part is, is that the ones who actually care about their jobs, they um, get. They they, they, get, they get swept under the rug by the bad yeah, guys. Yeah, and if they try to stand up, they usually get fired or harassed. But that's why I encourage if there are good public officials and public workers out there and you really cannot quit your job, I understand. If that's your livelihood, I couldn't sleep at night no matter how much money it brought me. But I understand you might have small children, whatever. Reach out to somebody. Reach out to a local activist and see if they can help you investigate. Steer them in the right direction, you know. So maybe, you know, they can expose the corruption and you can give them some inside tips. You ain't got to give, you know, so remain anonymous shit. I don't know. We're not, well, there's not much we can do, but video, but it's better than nothing because I know that, you know, something's got to be done. Hey, ashamed. Yeah, good cops never get promoted. No, look, look at the sergeants. Both of those guys, both Pierce that has, you know, the, the me and Amanda both wrong and has doxed me. And, and and then and then the, the guy that I go to, to reporting on to another sergeant I can't remember his name. Look how he acted. Look how the guy that I asked for his name and badge number acted. He told me no. <laughs> his name was Glass, and I think he was a uh, I don't even think he was a cop. I think he was like a lieutenant or something. Yeah, and the good cops are very far and few between. You're right, Spooky. They are very far and few between, and um. And like I said, once they, you know, once they wake up and see, because I know a lot of people were not taught the Constitution, Bill of Rights, things like that in school. I understand that. But before you swear an oath to something, I believe you should know it. What you're swearing an oath to, I know I would. I would have to know. I can't even stand up there and swear to something and not read it. Jeez. And then, you, you know... I, I don't know. You just hey, no justice. And then, so you should know it because you should swear to it before you do it, and you should know it before you swear to it. And then when you get in there and you see they're not doing it, you should know by the training that they're not doing it. One of the main things they should be covering in training is right. And you should tell them everything you do must line up with the fact that it doesn't violate any of these, any of these rights that human beings have in this country as laid out in this constitution right here and they should also teach them about public photography i, I shared an article with um um amanda this morning i started up on my community page i don't know if i did or not but it said police um looking for witnesses video in a, in a shooting because they need help you know so now they're hoping somebody's taking video uh just like one time they were in Amanda's neighborhood, they asked if they could use her if she had any footage on her outdoor cameras. I mean, damn, you want our cameras when it's to your advantage, but any other time you don't, and you want to claim victims. What do you think about them claiming victim under that Marcy's law, Tori? 
I think that's a load of manure. And quite, quite honest with you, police departments and fraternal orders of police, they have conversations just kind of like what we're doing here today. They yeah, that's about, who pushed for this shit, you know? Yeah, they talk about how to jam auditors up and how to um, get things toward what they want. Because let's face it, they, they're, they're not... All the stuff that they allege auditors and cop watchers do has nothing to do with public safety. They just don't want to be held accountable. And they made a video about uh, me and Amanda... Um, a propaganda video, uh, like one of those kind of associations did. Mm -hmm. and they go out of their way to make it seem like citizens are targeting all cops. But the fact is, is that if they were more transparent to start with, that people wouldn't need to be filming them. But we do need to film them. Everyone needs to film them. Because Everyone. Time, time and time again, it's been proven that their audio, their video is not available to the public. And even if it is, it's always edited, muted, things like that. So, I, I mean, like... We should have both. Right. And again, okay. when I got, when I talked to the, the sergeant for this other officer, he immediately went into, well, you're just out here trying to, trying to catch us do something wrong. And as I explained to that sergeant... Uh, he actually worked with me to get some illegal signs taken down at that police station. I said, mm -hmm. you know what I do? I'm not out here to jam up officers. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even talking to an officer. I'm out here following up on signs. And he's like, so you you admit it. You're out here for no good reason. And I'm like, you, you don't think that getting officers to stop arresting people unlawfully is a good reason. They don't see that. They cannot perceive anything good that you do. And every time I talk to someone who's quote unquote a good officer and they go, yeah, you're not like these other guys. You're not out here clowning us. So, you know, but why do you do it? And I, I tell them, I said, because what I do stops good officers from making bad arrests. And it is important to me. It is important that I educate the officers that want to learn. And so right. I've so had they, success in it. Right. But, it's but about it, education for officers, too. The ones that listen, look, we're going to play this next video real quick. Um, this video was made by one of those type of associations. And uh, in the description, they link a video of me and Amanda. That's not even an audit. But I'm going to play this real quick for everybody. I know some of you guys have seen it before. I've shared it a few times. And when Amanda sent this to me, she said, I think this is about us. I'm like, no, it ain't. But then even she hadn't read the description. But then I read the description and I seen her video in there and it was about us. What are you doing? You cannot be violating her rights like this. Hello, I'm Michael Ogradnik with the Palm Beach Police Department. What you just witnessed was a First Amendment audit. Today we're going to speak briefly about First Amendment audits. My presentation today is brought to you by the Palm Beach Police Department and Palm Beach Crime Watch. So what is a First Amendment audit? First Amendment audits started in the early 2000s. Self-appointed auditors would go into public spaces and record public safety officials while they were performing their job in an effort to observe civil rights violations for officers, fire, or police doing their job improperly violating. and violating someone's rights. So what has it morphed into now? Most recently, we've seen First Amendment auditors have become very aggressive, where they encroach on the safety of police officers and the citizens they're recording. Our job is to keep you safe. Your job is to keep yourself safe. How do we do that against the First Amendment audit? Don't engage with them. First Amendment auditor is going to be very aggressive, want to be in your face, want to ask you questions. You're under no obligation to answer them nor are they under any obligation to answer you. Our job as law enforcement is to make sure we don't violate their First Amendment rights, which is their right to record us, their Fourth Amendment rights, which is an unlawful search or seizure, and their Fifth Amendment right. They don't have to answer questions when we ask them. But by the same token, we can identify ourselves and we can disengage just like you can. So if you're out in public and a First Amendment auditor walks up on you when you're having a peaceful interaction with a police officer, or you're out at dinner with your family and they walk up and start recording you, you have a couple of options. Most important option is don't engage with them. If they make you feel uncomfortable, 
They're doing what they feel is their job. You can just walk away. Ask management of the restaurant that you're at to see if they can uh, shoo them along or call the police department. We'll engage with them. But understand that if they're in a public place and they're viewing you in a public place or recording you in a public place, they can do that. So I want you to keep that in mind when a First Amendment auditor shows up, whether you're at a restaurant al fresco, out in public, or in an interaction with the police department. Please be safe. Please report all suspicious activities to the Palm Beach Police Department. Take care of yourselves, and we're going to help take care of you too. Thank you for enjoying this today. Let me read what this says real quick, okay? It says Palm Beach Crime Watch and the Palm Beach something. Whatever this, I don't know what it says because they have the whole thing in there, are not endorsing citizens to take any action against First Amendment auditors. We're encouraging individuals to seek legal counsel before taking any civil action. I didn't even really notice this part before in there, but um, Hebrews in the chat, we had watched this one time, me and him in DC and some other people, and uh, we watched it together on a live stream. And and we both saw, uh, and I always thought from the first time I seen it, they were like calling on citizens to like get offended or something by um, the the lawyer. I mean, the lawyer, the by us, you know, by by people that that video the police. Now, if you look right here, okay, if you can see in the description right here, I don't know if you guys can see it, it says for an example. Of uh, a First Amendment auditor's video, click here. Palm Beach C Crime Watch and Palm Beach Police Department educate the public on First Amendment auditors and what to do if you encounter this situation. And um, at one time, they had a they they erased a bunch of videos uh, um, comments up here. I think now we really need to redo it. And if you go here and you leave a comment, please screenshot it. Because I know that when me and Amanda share this, that our people that came over here and flooded this thing with comments, okay? And now they're gone. So please leave a comment and screenshot your comment. This thing also has almost 6,000 views. When Amanda found it, it had like four views, I think, or something. That was low. I'm not sure exactly. And it had like one comment or two comments. It wasn't many. So guys, please, if you leave a comment there, please take a screenshot and then check back and, and see if they erase it. Because um, I'm, if this is, I'm not sure who these people are, but if this PD, PBFF, if this is public, if they erase that, they can get in trouble because this, as a, even if it's a Facebook page, I do believe if it's public, that they're not supposed to be erasing that stuff. If we make comments on a public Facebook, a public YouTube, and I believe this is public, this okay. So, anytime you do that with any kind of um, you make any kind of comment on any kind of Google, anything like that, if it's public. Don't make no threats or nothing like that. Just make something. Um, say your piece and then screenshot it and see, and then go back and see if it's gone later. And if it is, y'all need to collect that up. We need to all get it together and see what we can do about it. Okay. Now let's see. We're click the link for an example of a First Amendment auditor's videos. Click here. Okay. Let's check out this auditor's video. Oh, sorry. Ad. <laughs> this is not an audit. This is us doing scenery. Yeah. Look at the sidewalks all crowded. Did, did you see that, guys? This is Amanda's video. This 
with American Amy. Amy. I, hope I hope she's, she's okay, okay, guys. It's kind of up by. On the grass. I walked on the grass because they had a sidewalk blocked. We're not going to watch that whole thing. I think a lot of you guys have seen it, but if not, the whole story is on there. There's my view. If you look on my channel, there's Amanda's. That was Amanda's view there. There's, um, we both have, um, I think both of us have copies of, or different copies of the audio or something. I'm not sure, but yeah, I'm not sure, but yeah. And pictures and stuff. I think I even got the undercover video just from the da the dash because they sent an undercover. If you look in that video, <laughs> once they call the police, it's crazy. And this isn't this hasn't regular Palm Beach. This isn't the same department now. This is the well, con this is the sheriff's office that well, it was that association. But the department we were dealing with that night is the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office, as in Palm Beach, <clears throat> as in Palm Beach down there by like where Trump lives, that part of Palm Beach, by the breakers and shit. <laughs> so anyway, um, and that video is long. And, you know, that night we were just, we hadn't been out caught watching and we had given up on caught watching and we we're like, you know what, this is, this is really nice down there, you know, we're just going to show everybody some scenery and we're walking on the sidewalk. And like I said, they had tables on one side of the sidewalk. And on the other side, they had water and wine. So I chose to walk on the grass so I could walk around all that shit, you know. And they get all offended because I had a video camera as I walked by. I'm sorry, you're in public. I'm not going to stand there and video people when they're eating their dinner. But... I am going to walk by and, uh, and, uh, and video for a second. Yeah, I am. I find it interesting. And most businesses aren't going to say, say nothing. I've even had businesses invite me in and give me tours before. Okay? They want the bit of the pre-publicity. You understand? But I, mean, well, I don't want to sit there and stare at people while they're eating. It's not our fault and people tripped out on us as we walked by. And then the waiters and waitresses come out there and, you know, trying to get in our face and stuff. They can't tell us what to do. And if they really thought we were doing something that we shouldn't have been doing, then I guess they should have done the thing right. They should have called the police. Or maybe they should have asked their guests to just stop saying anything to us. I tried to walk away from there five times. And every time I try to walk away, somebody called me back and talked some more shit to me, you know? Which, yeah, sure, I still should have been the bigger person and walked away. Of course, I should have, you know? But none of us are perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, every time they talk some shit, I'd be walking away. And that's why it just seems so stupid to me. If you want somebody to leave and they're leaving, don't talk shit. Let them leave. They're giving you what you want. That's why I was trying to give the people what they wanted. I was trying to leave, even though I didn't have to leave, because I was on the grass. I wasn't even on the sidewalk, which I had every right to be. What if somebody came by in a walker or a wheelchair? How would that got by? And again, I think these cities, these little cities, just like that time we were in Lake Park and something like that happened in front of a bar. The police again wanted to decide with the business owners i mean in this situation when the police come you have to watch the videos and see what happens we didn't you know they knew we had the right to film in public but they you know 
just have to watch it. I can't, can't remember exactly what happened. Well, actually, I, I kind of can. But anyway, watch the videos, you know, and learn, see what happened. If you haven't already, I know a lot of you have seen it. I don't know what happened to Tori. Oh, anyway, um, so yeah, let's, I feel like I've covered a lot of information today. I really, I don't like this Marcy's Law thing, and I thought that they hadn't even decided on that yet. I mean, I like the Marcy's Law for real, for real crime victims. I think it's important that their name be redacted. But a cop. You know, you can you don't have to give their address, give the police station like they put on their driver's license if they want to, but you know, come on now. And why do they want to be so non transparent all the time? Make a mistake, you make a mistake. Okay, does anybody want to come up here and join me? If not, we're probably gonna cut this out pretty soon. We lost Tori. Tori come back up and talk some more. You're welcome. I'm done playing videos for now. I just wanted to show that story, you know, about how the cops are acting. So now I guess, see, I want to, I'm not done with that department either. So eventually I want to go back there and I want to complain on this pure sky and on this sergeant doctor, you know. I guess I'm going to have to go to AI. I don't know. I mean, they act like it's a joke. You see how condescending they are? And he told me he didn't have time to watch my stuff. <sighs> but you got time to know who I am. Tori got on that bus with noise and hat. And we'll be back shortly. Okay. When Tori, Amy's getting tired. Amy don't know how long she can last. <laughs> I didn't go to bed. It was kind of late. And then I woke up early. <laughs> when don't I wake up early? No matter what time I fall asleep, I still wake up early. Always. So, I hope everybody had a good New Year's Eve. And I told y'all a million times I did. I told y'all I went bowling. That was my first time bowling. It was fine. And I can't bowl real good. I had to do it like a little kid and bowl in between my legs. <laughs> but But I did okay that way. Oh, let's see. Somebody's knocking on our door. It's Tori. Maybe he's off that noisy bus now. <laughs> hey, dear. Uh, can you hear me now? I'm just getting off that bus. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to didn't want to distract your viewers. The buses are kind of loud. And, uh, uh, it's no big deal. I just want to. I was. Just, I'm done showing videos now. I was just was showing them how. Oh well, the last one I was showing them was you know that one where that. Uh, place that you know showed a video of us doing scenery and then they came out there acting crazy to us you know and that wasn't no audit that was just us trying to do normal yeah i could have been we could have been anybody walking by that night taking that's a that's that's down there by the breakers that's worth avenue down that way people are going to video down there you would think i mean it's a popular place yeah and that's one of those things that um, it wasn't an audit. It was just scenery. But even if it was an audit, we were on the sidewalk. That's one of the things that officers are in a in a bind when they respond because they know they can't do anything and they hate it. But um, it, it's one of those things where I used to be like really against people doing um, private property First Amendment audits or near private property because I always saw it as kind of like, well, you're kind of harassing people, but you're not. Right. And people yeah, can I say something? Let me say something real quick. Um, I don't, I'm not saying I would never, ever audit a private business, but I never have so far. This night, we were just walking down the sidewalk, like, doing scenery like you would if you were on vacation, you know? Right. And, and that's what... Like any other tourist. I wasn't, you know, I don't, I wasn't, it's not an audit. And I, that's scenery. That caused a bunch of Karens went crazy. That ain't and, my fault. And that's, <laughs> that's again one of the reasons why, where I used to say I didn't like those. Yeah, I don't uh, like them either. Property. But I guess everybody does need to know because, like that night, that I, that I didn't want that at that point. I wasn't trying to audit nothing. Me and my friend were just trying to show 
our online friends scenery. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hey, and if anything, they weren't my night. If you can step back and look at it outside of your context, though, that's part of sure. what the police were saying in their video is that you have the right to do that. They're actually trying to let the public know, hey, stop calling us on these damn Karen calls. But if you're really concerned, then let management know or if you have to call us because the officers have to respond if they're called. Even right. Though and the ones that did respond that night, um, they were okay. You know, they didn't say nothing too crazy. They, they said we had to stay six feet apart. But that was kind of stupid because, you know, it's not our responsibility to be six feet away from the restaurant's tables when they should have them six feet away from the sidewalk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this was because of the restrictions and stuff. But regardless, I'm not going to nitpick that. You have to all right. But regardless, I don't know. You can read a lot into it. I don't know what all their plans were, but I think part of it was like propaganda. I think part of it might have, you know, because if they truly want to educate, there's plenty of, you know, good educational videos. There's plenty of us out there that would help them educate, you know. Um, and, oh, no, they, they definitely chose that to make it look like citizens are harassing people with cameras. Yeah. And, and again, it, it is. They, they pick and choose what they want to get out there. But uh -huh. I guess where, where I'm saying there is is – if you listen to what the officers are trying to actually say, yeah, they're trying to make it seem like, oh, well, you know, we're the victims of this, but they're also letting the public know, hey, they have a right to do this. So Yeah, they do say we have the right to do it, but I still feel almost like they're calling on the citizens to be upset about it, too. And maybe that's just me. I don't know. No, no, it, it's not just you because I've had I've had or maybe it's a combination. Maybe they're trying to do all these things at one time. I mean, I've, I've actually had a police lieutenant say. What happened to you? Was, are, are you still I lost, there? I lost you for a minute. I said, I lost you. At, I had a police lieutenant say. Okay, I had a police lieutenant tell me, well, you have a right to go around filming people, but if someone punches you in the face, you may deserve it. And I'm like, are you really going to say that a person filming out in deserves to be assaulted? And he's like, well, you know, if, if you upset the wrong person, that may happen. And I'm like, you know, if I upset the wrong cop, you may shoot me. Right. Um, it may happen. Some may, may hit us, but then it would be their job to, um, to, to, to report against that person, but they generally don't. Yeah, and because they, do, they only do it just to get our info. Yeah, and I, I mean, you know, I, I try to explain to that, that lieutenant, and we, we came to an understanding afterwards, because in his opinion, all auditors are out to get a reaction of some type. And they, what they don't understand is... from that, though, too. Yeah, what um, they don't understand is that what we really want is no reaction at all. Right, that's my favorite. Just leave me alone. I want you to just let me document and and... I may ask you for your name and badge now. That's the worst you're going to hear from me usually. I just want to document. But um, they come over there giving directives and stuff. And they train them, too. They tell them. I mean, I'm sure there's some departments that actually have decided, hey, let's go ahead and give proper First Amendment training. I'm sure there's some departments that have done that. And I thank God for the few that probably have. But most, instead of just going ahead and telling them up front, instead of just saying, oh, well, they're going to bait. There are going to be people with a camera out to bait you. Yeah, they got the right to do it, but they're trying to catch you doing something wrong. How about, hey, let's not do nothing wrong. Let's try to get things right all the time. And when we meet these people, let's be a shining example for our community and know that anybody can be filming you at any time. So, you know, how about use this? It could, it could be used for education in so many different levels, but instead, but they don't want the police to act right. You know, they, they don't want them to. And they set them up for failure, even if there are cops that wanted to be good. Like I said, they set them up for failure. They can't, they're not set up to be good. They've trained them all wrong. And that's, that's again, why I say 
you can tell a good officer almost immediately if you pop up or if you audit or do any any public filming at all. Um, a good officer, he may look at you, he may try to introduce himself, but he's not going to push things. You know, these officers who go, give me your name, give me your name. If, you know, I, I watched an audit one time and it was one of the, the main guys. I think it was James Madison. And the sergeant, when he was saying, you, you can't ask me for my name. And the sergeant, just to prove a point, asked two ladies walking into the building. He said, I can legally ask you for your name anytime. Watch. And he made two ladies give him his name, their names. And he said, see, I can do it. It's not illegal for me to ask. It's not and, illegal for him to ask. Right. But, um, but it's but inappropriate. It's, it is inappropriate, but the people don't have to answer. Right. And see, and that's where. And that's where most people don't know their rights. But um, um, I don't consider a good. For me, it takes more than one action for me to decide if a cop's good. However, I can decide if one's bad in one interaction. Well, for me, and I try to tell this to auditors all the time, for me, I do things a lot different than auditors or cop watchers, though, because most of my interactions require an interview or something else. So <clears throat> for me, I don't have a problem identifying to officers. That's just me. I'm not suggesting. Well, I, mean, I don't care if they know who I am, but I don't want to identify because of the fact that they're Ask, you know, I don't owe them my ID unless they suspect no, me of a crime. No, exactly. And so and I may me, give my first name occasionally in a consensual conversation, but um, right. for me, if I approach an officer, I always identify myself. It doesn't have to be my full main name. I can yeah, just say yeah. I'm, you know, that's your choice. But as, but as if far officer, as me surrendering my ID when I don't feel like I have to, that's yeah. different. And well, that's why I say this is my my number one way of determining if an officer is going to be a bad officer to start with. Every right. department has a policy on when and how their officers have to identify. You have to know mm -hmm. that policy. Every department's different. In my particular city, San Antonio police have to identify by name. They don't have to give you the badge number. And mm -hmm. the, the bad officers know this. The good officers they know it and depends on how your reaction. But if an officer ever approaches me, their policy when they contact the public is to identify first. Most, right. of them, most of them do not do that. So if they don't, I ask them for their name and their badge. If they're hesitant or if they don't give both their name and their badge, that tells me, number one, bad officer, bad officer right off the bat. If they just give their name and yeah. they don't give their badge and I ask for the badge again and they ignore it, then I know, okay, he may Bad be officer. following policy, but this is not a good contact because he's not being friendly or polite. He'll ask you for your name, but he doesn't want to give any information. So, I mean, little tells like that for me, mm -hmm. I wish everyone who had any contact with the police could see, you know, these first immediate warning signs that, hey, this is not going to be a good contact for you. If an officer is willing to break a little policy like identifying, you have no idea what else he's capable of doing or what policies he's going to choose to to adhere to and which ones he's going to violate. And so, I mean, that's why I tell people, I'm like, if an officer approaches you and he doesn't identify immediately, ask him for his name and badge. If he doesn't give it at that point, just consider it that regardless, it may be, be a consensual conversation at that point. But at that point, consider yourself being detained and don't answer a word. Don't say a word to him because it's not it's not an open or fair playing field like you were like we were saying earlier. Yeah. Talking to the police will never help you. There's nothing that you're going to gain from it. And especially if officers are being deceitful from the very beginning, if they're not willing to tell you their name, then, you know, they're going to lie to you about why they're approaching you. Right. Obviously, they have something to hide. They don't want to give you their name. You know, I, I've told people this before, too, when officers come up and say, well, you look like a suspect, describe the suspect. And if they give you an exact description of what you look like at that point, you should say, do you have a case number? Because mm -hmm. if they don't have a case number, they're lying and they've just made you into. And again, they're allowed to do that. That's a problem. But when you tell them, you know, what's the case number then? And then they go, uh, then, you know, they're lying, too. But why, why push yourself in that corner? 
why answer any questions to start with? And again, it goes back to psychology. People want to feel like, oh, I'm, I'm a good citizen. I'm, I'm cooperating with the police. I'm not going to do anything that would, you know, be construed as anti-police or whatever. And it's like, okay, just remember, it's not anti-police. It's protecting yourself because um, <clears throat> how well, many, self-preservation. Yeah, you know, how many times do we see these things on the news? Um, you know, and it's become more prevalent. But how many people have been arrested for officers planting drugs, doing things, lying, mm-hmm. and you know, in Florida, we had a case of a cop that come from a career cop family. Uh, he planted meth on a bunch of people. One person lost custody of their child. And um, a lot of the people went to jail. So, uh, And then a, a new, uh, I think, DA came in there. And she got, I think, suspicious of how many cases he had or something. I don't know. And she started looking into it, and he was found out. Yep. He went to prison, and she got fired, though. Even though she did nothing wrong, she got fired still. Yeah, because she crossed that blue line. That blue line. Yeah, and I mean, and, and in that particular case, that officer got 12 years, but he had over 112, 112 instances where he framed somebody people lost their life their liberty and i say their life no he didn't kill anyone but Remember he they lost their life. livelihood they lost their way of life they lost yeah. every no time how much money how, how, how many accomplishments how, how far they were in their job maybe they were up for a promotion you know but and i mean again that's why you know when i told people, person lost a kid so i mean i guess they probably got them back Tourists suck, says Keeper to List. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't didn't hear that. Well, I was talking to the chat. Oh, okay. The 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 fact is is that when I tell people don't let the police search you, there's no reason for it, and they go, Well, I don't have anything to hide. And I'm like, and neither did a lot of people that the cops planted things on. And right. that doesn't mean every cop's gonna do it. But you don't know them. Why take the chance? You know, I mean, honestly, um, I don't know a single cop. And I know a lot of officers who I consider good officers. And I know a lot of people go, there's no such thing. But when I say that, I mean, these are the type of guys who I know that they would not, or at least I don't believe that they would intentionally um, frame someone or lie. But I also know that they're the same type of officer who would lie to protect their own. So I wouldn't let any of them ever search me for any reason. Mm -mm. And just like the other day, um, when I was speaking with um, the officer and his sergeant came out and, you know, I'm armed. I, I carry a firearm sometimes and sometimes I don't. But if I'm armed and it's concealed there's absolutely no reason for me to tell an officer that all it does is increase their anxiety uh and you know someone had asked me about that once before and that's why i said i I never open carry in texas we're allowed to i know in florida you have different laws but open carrying just causes concern for people and um i'm like i don't like doing that it's not logical for me but Um, someone else is like, well, you know, don't you think that you should tell a cop if you, I'm like, why would I tell a cop? That'd be the same as me telling a cop that I have prescription drugs in my backpack that I'm allowed to have. I mean, if I'm allowed to have it, why do I need to tell the officer that there's no reason for me to do that? All it's going to do is increase his anxiety or give him what he thinks is probable cause to do something he shouldn't be doing. And while I'm a firm believer in everyone's Second Amendment rights to be armed, I also, you know, I dislike people who do Second Amendment audits where um, they go places and antagonize. Mm-hmm. And when I How say, do you antagonize? No, when, when I say that, listen, because most of these people don't do that. But when uh, people go and... They go to places that they know they're going to be people. Uh, for example, um, 
I, I have a group here in Texas that I've actually worked with, even though they're opposed to my beliefs. Mm-hmm. And uh, this this particular group, uh, it's Mothers Demand Action. They want stronger gun control laws. Uh, recently, we had a change in our gun laws here, and they were out trying to get businesses to post no gun signs. And some of their logic was flawed. And I went out and I told them, I said, I'm all for businesses putting up legal signs. I'd rather have the public know what they want than not. Um, But if you have a group like that in one area that's demonstrating and another another group wants to go out and counter demonstrate in that and to antagonize that group is one thing. But to go out and simply say, no, we're allowed to do that is a different thing. But you do get groups when they have differences of opinions that, you know, will shout barbs back and forth. When I spoke mm-hmm. with this group, the lady was like, oh, wow, you, you're actually caring? And I'm like, yeah, why, why wouldn't I? And she's like, well, you're telling them, you know, where to put these legal signs. I'm like, yeah, because if they don't want me to carry in their store, they need to let me know at the same time. Yeah, if it's a private business, they sure do. At the same time, when when she had said something, I, I brought up a fallacy in her logic. She's like, well, if they put these signs here, then people will go back to their car and leave their guns in their car so everyone's safer. And I said, that's not really logical at all, because if they leave their gun in their car and they come in here, someone can steal their gun from their car. And aren't you against criminals owning guns? Right. Or what if somebody them? robs a store and, yeah. and, and nobody has a weapon? Is everybody left in the car? But... I mean, and, and again, you know. They'd have me on the store, not, you know. They didn't want to ask people not to bring their weapons in. And, you know, that's that's one of those things, like I said, that lady and I, we had a, a really decent conversation. And, and I actually told her, I said, you know, one of your points that you brought up, the police actually asked me to do a public service announcement telling people, do not go back to your car and put your gun in your car after the change in this law because people will be watching. And in other words... Just don't open carry. Keep it concealed. But um, she was like, oh, I never thought about it from that view. And I'm like, no, because in your opinion, all guns are bad. And like, you know, her opinion is, honestly, I understand her views a a lot. You know, people do need training, but you can't mandate that. I can't get training. Right. Um, Um, Hold on one second. I'm yeah, I'm not surprised about that, guys, that that group. Yeah. I, I, I'm not surprised that they may be funded by what <laughs> Davos. Yeah. Um, you know, any group that's trying to infringe on the second, you know, I'm not going to lie. But what he's saying is he was able to just have a conversation with the lady and they were able to respect each other as human beings, but still disagree on some things. And that's the kind of conversations I like to have. And generally when you meet, somebody that's really invested in something like a group, it's very hard to talk to them about anything, you know, that might not agree exactly with them without personal insults and stuff. She was surprised he was nice, but, you know, it goes both ways because a lot of people aren't nice. They can't have a conversation with somebody they disagree with without getting all personal with it. No, and and that's what I was saying. You know, I mean, like I said, she was surprised because – um, I'd mentioned to one of the one of the business owners at at one point because he said, "Well, I don't have a problem with someone bringing in a concealed weapon, but I don't want them open carrying." I said, "Well, that's good. You can enforce that too, and that's what I would recommend you do because, like you said, it won't offend your customers if they don't know about it, and it doesn't impose on other people's rights." And she was like, mm-hmm. "Not a well, side of mine." You know, and at that point, that's when I, you know, I told him, you know, I, I don't, cho- I choose not to open carry. And she's like, what? You're, you're guns guy? And I'm like, yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it didn't need to come up before. It wasn't like I was hiding it. I'm just like, well, this is what you're doing. You know, I'm out here basically for the same reason to make sure that the signs are the appropriate signs. Right. Because you don't want people to come in the car and, and they be stolen out of the car. Is that what you're saying? I'm sorry. I'm getting a lot of distortion. You're saying you would want the signs to include to say not to leave them in the car because they could get stolen? Well, damn it, man. 
I think we're losing Tori. We lost his icon. You might have to come off and come back on, Tori. I don't know. PDF says he's shopping at a different place. You know, um, you gotta, you know, yeah, and we, we have to put, now Tori's muted. We have to pick our battles, you know. If people want to open carry, then, you know, there's a bunch of people out there that don't have no sense to know that, that a gun is just a gun <laughs> that you'd be alarmed about. But there's people out there that act crazy when they see a gun. I don't know why. Stupid anything could be a weapon. Um, people are crazy. I know if I had a business, I'd rather know that a person was coming in there that might could defend my business if some shit goes down, you know. But hey, you know, we all have to each his own. It's like I could be traveling with no tags and stuff, but I don't want to be put through that shit every time I go somewhere, you know. So I so I choose not to opt out of the driver's license program and be in and, and be a travel. Because I just can't do that. My my nerves can't handle that. Let's see. When you got Hebrew. And Tori is still up here, but you're muted, Tori. Yeah, I was getting some distortion from your mic. Okay. So I okay. wasn't sure if it was my my, my All right. feedback or so I just muted for a little while. All right, sweet. Hey Hebrew. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Tori. Good morning, Hebrew. Good morning. Good morning. Just wanted to chime in on the uh, on the weapons laws and the uh, during the Obama regime, Obama entered us into a small arms treaty with the United Nations. Out of the small arms treaty, once you enter into a treaty and you break a treaty, that's considered an act of war. These people know exactly what they're doing. Uh, even before that, the presidents, in order to set up the small arms treaty was in 1992 in Brazil when President Bush signed us on to the early form of what's called Agenda 21 slash 30. Okay. So a lot of these groups that are advocating against private ownership of weapons are receiving their monies from the Davos group out of Switzerland. I hear a lot of people talking about different types of sects and different types of uh, World Economic Forum but nobody's looking about who's writing these agendas and why. Okay. I've been in the firearm industry for a little over 25 years and I've been advocating. I've been to Washington, DC. I've done all kinds of stuff for guns. So basically in order to have a transfer of wealth, now normally one would think transfer of wealth of tangible asset. This particular transfer that we're under is a transfer of knowledge and the wisdom to decipher the knowledge in order to complete this transfer and create a balkanization effect like what happened in yugoslavia in 1992 we're on that same page we're, that's our atmosphere right now 1992 yugoslavia but in order to get these things done they have to first disarm the public and people are not picking up on the indicators in which these things are being noted uh, let's say for instance earlier in your in your uh, chat there and also in your panel, Amy, you were talking about the West Palm Beach public service announcement. That is an act of war. That is a Cloward and Piven technique. People are not seeing what's going on. It's to label journalists domestic terrorists like Obama did. Under the Obama regime, more journalists were locked up during that eight-year period than had, had happened in the past 200 years combined people are not seeing what's going on so all these little groups are receiving funding from overseas to nitpick at every little detail of a right that you have they don't want you to express yourself they don't want you to challenge the government they don't want you to redress your grievances in order to guarantee these rights you have to have an armed society that tells the government they cannot cross this threshold and they are after the guns. Once they take the guns, they're going to put people in camps. We Jews have seen this before. We know the math. People need to wake up. This is a war. They you already have, have camps up. ready. It is they a war. Have, yep, they already have camps ready. 
It's a war, and it's also a spiritual war on top of that. It's a real war. It's a spiritual war. It's all kinds of shit. Hey, um, what did you see earlier when I was showing about the Marcy's Law thing? What do you think about that? Okay, so the Marcy's Law was set up to protect the innocent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and subject to retaliation. Back in the 1920s, uh, public information was getting out, and then the mob would have retaliations against witnesses. So when they created the Marcy Law, it was originally for protection against the mafia. Yeah, uh, and, and, well, perhaps they had one like that, but this one here was, you know, originated out of California to protect a crime victim. Right. It was stalked and killed. But I think any victim of crime should be protected, but not some police that's on the job. Maybe if they're right. off the job, that'd be different. But not, well, and, and they're used as an excuse. They are. They're using it as an excuse because even though a police officer is off lock, he has to operate under professional standards. That means he's mm -hmm. a cop 24 hours a day. There is no off time yeah, for a cop. But, but they're using it for cops that are on duty. And if right. you, you guys were all in here earlier when I was showing the videos of that cop named Pierce, that sergeant that keeps messing with me and Amanda, um, that's the same department that, that they're hiding two cops' names that um, just killed. I mean, they just shot somebody. And luckily, the guy didn't die. But those two cops, I don't know who they were. It could be a cop I've done interacted with, but I'll, I don't know if I'll ever get to know, <laughs> you know, because they're claiming Marcy's law. Well, yeah. even under yeah. Marcy's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And at that intersection that's happened at, at that same intersection, a guy was killed a few years back there by this, a Gordon's cop. That cop did go to prison for 25 years, though. And see, that's yeah, I remember the 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 problem with hiding under these quote unquote laws to protect victims, et cetera, is that what they're doing they're really just hiding transparency. Um, while we don't expect our public officials um, to to have to worry about everything that they do every day they need to they they need to be on the up and up and if there is a shooting and it's in the line of duty the public has a right to know and we definitely have the right to see the entire episode i mean that that's one of the issues that i have right now with the uh, san antonio independent school district is one of their officers lied to me and said he was a san antonio police officer while he was blinding me and i'm like no you're not you're san antonio independent school district that police department still refuses to release that officer's name. What, what do you think their reason for that is? Why? Because they know that I cannot press charges without his name. That's pathetic. It's just an excuse to hide and bury things instead of having transparency. And, and again, for the Marcy, for them using any, any excuse to hide transparency is an affront to the American public. You have to ask for a PDF. So if any, hey, if any of anybody, if you're in the state of Florida or any other state that has adopted this Marcy's law, if you are a victim of a crime ever, make sure as soon as it happens, you tell them you want to invoke Marcy's law and tell them to redact your name out of that shit. Okay. So if they can use it, make sure you use it, especially if you're a victim. Okay, make sure you ask them because this if it, it's a lot, is I know it's in California and Florida. Check with your local state and see if it's there too. And if so, any crime PDF you could have asked for it, and they would have had to react, redact your name, they would have had to have. So now we know no one's half to battle actions, the other half. Oh, damn, you, you all Sorry. right, buddy? Yeah, putting the coffee <laughs> on the coffee pot. Sorry. That's okay. Making some cafe cubano. All right then. But uh, yeah, it's uh, this system is destined to fail, and uh, it's going to be very interesting in the next, I would say, eight years. Um, if we're not in a full blown civil war in two years, then we're we've skipped the civil war stage and walked into a a world war. Um, I implore people to keep your eyes on Ukraine.
uh, Ukraine is going to be a temperature gauge on what's going to happen here in the United States. Uh, mm, yeah, yes, I heard a thing the other day about that, about they're putting more troops there. I heard something about women in India being drafted. Uh, I'm hearing some weird shit. Um, I'm sorry, real quick. Um, PDF says you don't have to ask for it. Well, I thought you did, PDF. Maybe I misunderstood it. Hey, Jay. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Hebrew, because I've heard that about Ukraine, too. I haven't had time to get research it yet. Not very okay. much. So um, if, if anybody has uh, heard about the Putin-Biden uh, contact, they had a telephone call for a little over an hour. Uh, I don't know if people have read that yet. It's very interesting that what was said, and I have been watching Putin for a very long time now. And so basically um, in the 90s, when communism dissolved and the Soviet Union dissolved there shortly after, the NATO expansion into the East was delegated to stop at a certain parallel and the constant expansion all the way into Ukraine. So Russia simply explained, he sat in front of the world and said, look now, we have nowhere else to go. You're putting your missiles in our backyard. Did we put missiles on the Mexican border with the United States or the Canadian border? No, you came to us. We have nowhere else to go. We will turn you into ash if you cross this line. Okay, he told the world straight up, we will turn you into ash if you cross this line. So the constant pushing of the Biden regime, his son in Ukraine with the oil pipeline, and the change of government, the Maidan revolution, which is uh, deciphered into what's called an orange revolution. <clears throat> so basically, Trump, I'm sorry, Trump, uh, Biden and Putin are on a speech on a phone. It was a couple days ago, probably three or four days ago. And so Biden told Putin, we're going to send advisors to Ukraine. And, and uh, Putin says, well, we already have our advisors in Ukraine for nine years now. So the United States is nine years behind a troop deployment. We've got 1,000 advisors and NATO sent three and a half thousand advisors. Russia's got 200,000 troops on the border. Russia's not playing any games with these people. The NATO expansion is done. It's over with. The Russians are no longer going to allow this to happen. Now we look overseas into what's going on over on the other side of the border of Israel in Syria. Russian and Israeli troops right now, as we speak, are attacking Iranian Hezbollah in Syria. But meantime, in the United States, people are bitching and hollering about the wrong things. We are two thirds of the way into a civil war here and people don't even see it. I don't know, I may be operating on a whole other parallel, but at the same time, we've seen this before. Oh, yeah, but people don't want to believe it. But they need to think back to just two, three years ago. A lot of people were saying a lot of things, and people were telling them they were crazy. I know people were telling me I was crazy, and unfortunately, a lot of things I've seen coming have came true. I hate it. I wish I'd have been wrong. Hey, snap face. But unfortunately, a lot of this shit, unfortunately, is real. It is happening. And we've got to try to do our best to stand up against these things. Well, what I implore people to do is to get involved in which... Uh, Run for uh, office. That should yep, be your quote. That's going to be Hebrew. Office. That, yep, that's going to be Hebrew's um, motto. <laughs> Like like Ackerman, does your liar his as we run for office? But I like it, Hebrew. Go ahead, tell us. Okay, so you know, get in where you fit in. Um, you know, I'm not a, a, I don't have the skill asset to do what most people do in the sense of going out and, and conducting an audit. I couldn't do that. Um, if somebody crossed the threshold or said the wrong thing, then I would react in such a manner. Um, so I. I I, I can't do that, but each person has their skill level and they need to apply these skill levels, question authority, petition your government, file complaints, file lawsuits. Okay. 
If you don't exercise these rights, they're going to amend them away. And the National Defense Authorization Act is very real. People don't, don't understand how that applies to the First and Second Amendment auditors. Okay? Under the National Defense Authorization Act, you can be deemed a terrorist without probable cause, without warrant, and you can be detained indefinitely without charge. All they have to do is set up the issue of domestic terrorists. And that is exactly what they're doing in West Palm. I talked to Rogue Nation about this, and, uh, and he agrees. He sees what's going on with it. They're painting a picture, and so they can label people. Anybody that questions authority is now a domestic terrorist. All right. The, Na the National Defense Authorization Act is one of the worst things that ever happened to America. Where did they get this idea from? How did they write it? Who wrote it? Where it came out of 1933 Nuremberg that set up the Nazi codification laws. Um, I've argued one time, healthy argued one time in a chat and PDFs channel that a person was talking about a democracy. And we live in a republic, we, don't we? That's right. We, there is no such thing as a democracy. It is a fantasy. It is a Nazi protocol. When the Nazis took over in 1933, they sent a delegation to the United States to study the democracy that was being proposed in the United States. When the Nazis went to the University of Arkansas and they came back to Germany, and you know what they said to Hitler? They said that the democratic policies in the United States are too extreme for us. How in the hell is a domestic uh, I'm sorry, democratic policy too extreme for Nazi. Wake up, folks. Wake up. It is. It's, it's absurd that it people is. don't, you know, go out and try to educate themselves in world knowledge. They only especially, listen to what's going on here. Especially now, as a, as a police like say in this day and age, we have the resources at our fingertips. There's, you know, a lot of the tools that, that we use for good, it's going to be used against us. But while we can use them for good, research, research, research. So now yeah. we look at we look at the the laws that are coming out of two states, Florida and Texas. OK, thank God that the governors are in the position that they are and who they are in these positions, because and basically you know, 11 Talking about uh, Florida, DeSantis, uh -huh. and Texas. No, Abbott. I mean, but you're, you're talking about House Bill 11? No, 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 no. What I'm talking about is how they relaxed laws into allowing people to be armed without a license. Okay. So basically what they're trying to do is warn the people without panicking the people that it's a necessity to be armed in today's society, in this day and age. We can utilize that to our benefit as well. In this day and age, the way that the government is set up, the governors of Texas and Florida are warning the people, get armed. I don't know if anybody remembers, and they may not have it online anymore. Back after Hurricane Andrew hit Miami, the police chief of Metro Dade got on and told the people, go out and get armed. We can no longer protect you. Well, it's not their job to protect us, actually. No, not at all. But they're still warning the people that, hey. Well, they should, should yeah. Yeah. This is coming down the pipeline. All right, guys, let's see. I'm getting tired. I'm thinking about going back to sleep for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it was good talking with you. Yeah, it's good talking to you guys. Um. Yeah, I, I I was upset when I found out about this Marcy's Law thing. I was upset when I heard they were trying to do it the first time, you know. That was about, Lord, over a year ago. And then here it is. I guess they've gotten away with it. And I guess that's going to be the case now. I don't know. Maybe we could do something about it eventually. But anyway, if you didn't see it all, guys, um, I'll have the links. And in the description. Anyway, thank you all, and I appreciate y'all joining me.
and y'all have a good day and happy new year. And happy new year, everyone. Happy new year. Be safe. And uh, remember uh, the what one of the things that um, Hebrew Hammer mentioned was the NDAA, and uh, I always hit on this time and time again. That's exactly what the fusion centers do. They build actionable intelligence against auditors uh, under the guise of domestic terrorism. And so you, you, you got to be careful. If time and time again, you see people getting felony charges thrown at them that wouldn't fly, but it doesn't matter. They tie you up in court and they're silencing you this way. So yes. Be careful out there, guys. Um, you know, don't play into the into a losing game. You know, with with when I say that, I mean if if you're going to get into auditing or cop watching, know your laws. Don't make stupid statements. Don't make threats. Don't don't give them an excuse. You know, um, because they'll find it and and they'll again build actionable intelligence. And, and when they say they're looking for actionable intelligence, they're looking for something to flat out say, yeah, you're a domestic terrorist. Just wait until you travel to a foreign country, okay, that are on certain lists, and then when you come back to the United States, you're put on a 48-hour immigration hold. You want, to, you want to talk about scary? I bet. I challenge anybody out there in the YouTube world to, to talk with me about their immigration hold. Yeah, right. I think I'll just stay right here in this country. All right, yo. Mm -hmm. I appreciate have a good one. I appreciate everybody in the chat. Thanks to all my mods. Hey, Patrick, I didn't even see you in there. All right, if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. All right, I'll catch y'all later. Thanks. Bye bye.